Hi everyone, Jeremy here from Vita Studio. Today I'm going to show you how to create a unique transition using photos, blending mode, and a few simple tricks inside of DaVinci Resolve. By the end of this tutorial, you'll know how to use your own images or the one from website like Unsplash, Pixabay, or Pixel to build your own custom transition that will make your edit stand out. Plus, I'll share some tips on how to polish the effect and even save it as a reusable transition. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, we're in DaVinci Resolve right now, we're on the edit page and I have two clips available in my timeline and I would like to create a transition with it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a cross dissolve transition to use as a base. To do that, we can simply go over to effect video transition and then we can apply a cross dissolve. But as you can see right now, nothing is happening because we didn't trim the edges of our clip. So we need to just trim the edges of the clip first and then we're gonna apply the transition. So here, I'm gonna want my transition to start around there. I'm gonna link the two clip together again and we're gonna apply the cross dissolve this time. Now I'm gonna want to reduce the transition time to about six frame. I'm gonna explain you why in a second. Now let's move over to Fusion to create the transition. Right now, as you can see, we get that simple fade transition happening. We want to happen like uh, in one go, like from you know the middle of the frame. We just wanted to switch from clip one to clip two. So we're gonna make a modification to the anime curve that is on the cross dissolve. I'm just gonna double click here on that group, select the dissolve, and then here, as you can see, we get an animation on the background and foreground. We can recognize that by this icon right here that shows that there is an animation on it. So we're gonna go over to the modifier where the anime curve control R, and then here we're gonna switch from linear to custom and we're gonna create our own curve. Basically, we're gonna switch directly rather than ramping up step by step, we're gonna switch directly from one clip to the other. So it doesn't really matter exactly. I'm just gonna create like a curve right now that's gonna switch directly from one to the other. And now as you can see, it's just switching directly here from frame two to frame three and we have uh, the switch happening. Now, as you can see, that is not much of a transition. That is basically what you would get if you were just making a cut in the edit page, but that's gonna act as the base for us to build our transition on top of. So for this image flick through transition, we're gonna first need to source a bunch of images. You can do that from a few websites for free, like Unsplash, Pixabay or Pixel. They all have a bunch of different images to choose from, so you can just browse and select uh, images from each of those websites if you don't find everything you need on one website. For these specific cases, we're gonna try to get a bunch of images that are horizontal because we want it to match the aspect ratio of our frame. So I'm just gonna go around and try to find imagery that match a bit with the clip that I have, maybe in the color grading, even though that doesn't matter too much, you'll see why in a second, because we're gonna use an explosion blending mode so the color don't matter too much, but basically six frames that might encapsulate the place you are in. In our case, with that sequence, we choose New York. So we have here New York in the background, and then we have a bunch of people hanging out by a bridge in New York. We're gonna select a bunch of images that represent New York. You can choose as many images as you want, but personally, I will recommend six images because that's just not too much, not too little, and you work pretty well with those kind of timing. So here, I'm just gonna select my six images and download them. Then once that's done, we're gonna go over to a website called I Love Images, and we're gonna use their Resize Images tool to resize everything to the right dimension. So here I'm gonna select all my images and bring the image resizer, and we're gonna switch here from not percentage, but by pixel, and we're gonna choose a dimension. You can choose HD or 4K. In my case, we're simply gonna go with HD, so I'm gonna do 1920 by 1080. But then here, as you can see, I'm getting a few different format if I keep the same aspect ratio. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna simply untick maintain aspect ratio. That way we're getting basically the same size for all the different images. It doesn't really matter if they are get squished a little bit, etc., because that's gonna be a very fast transition anyway. Once that's done, I'm just gonna select resize images and we're gonna download them to start using them. It's automatically downloading a folder to my computer and now I can simply unzip the file. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rename that sequence. So I'm gonna select the six different images. I'm gonna right click on it. And we're gonna select rename. Here, I'm gonna select format. And then here we're gonna rename them with a custom format, transition and starting number from zero 
rename everything. And now we have each file renamed like transition zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right now I've done it as a group and I really don't care about the order, but if you care about the order, you can just rename them one by one. And basically the zero gonna be the first one being display. The one is gonna be the second one, so on and so forth. Now we're going back to DaVinci Resolve. We select the six images and we drag them directly to all working area. As you can see now, it hasn't bring the six images. It has compiled them together and it's now a sequence of six images going just one by one. You're gonna see that by linking here the media in three, two to cross dissolve. Now we have the image and if we go frame by frame, as you can see at each frame, the image is changing to the next one. So that's what we're gonna use to create our transition. But now as you see, we got a resizing problem. So all we're gonna do is here select the media in three, it shifts space on our keyboard and we're gonna search for the resize node. Just click enter and now it has been automatically resized. Don't pay attention here, I have a custom expression on it, but it doesn't matter, we can just remove that expression and you, it will be just the default one. The only thing is that maybe you might have auto resolution ticked here, uh, maybe untick it and select keep frame aspect if uh, it doesn't adapt properly. Now that we have our sequence, we need to play around with the blending mode to mix both the photo and the video. To do that, we're gonna go over to the merge and then here we're gonna play around with the apply mode. Right now, by default, it's normal. As you can see, if I play it, we're just flickering through a bunch of images. But now, if I start to just switch between the different apply mode, as you can see, we are getting a different kind of look and you can just play around with that apply mode to find what uh, gonna fit your footage best and the look you are going for. Basically that's gonna affect either the color or the different luminance part of your images and footage. So it really depends on whatever uh, you're trying to achieve. So just play around with it. I personally like to use uh, stuff like difference and exclusion that emulate a bit a uh, roll of film being scam. So here is the first result of our transition. Now we still need to do a few things if we want to make that transition a bit more reactive and if we want to polish it up a little bit. So the first thing, as you might see, is that here in the edit page, if I start to extend the frame to uh, extend the transition, it's not working. We're just having our first six frame and right now nothing is happening properly. So to be able to extend it properly, what I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna make sure to extend it to the maximum. So here that's gonna be about 80 frame. And then we're gonna go uh, over to Fusion again. We're gonna select on Media in three. And then here I'm gonna select Loop. And as you can see automatically here, that adjusts the global in and out. And that's just extending that uh, to just like big amount. And now if we go back to the edit page, as you can see, we have that flicker through going on the entire way. However, again, I will not recommend it. I would suggest that you keep those transitions short because it tends to work better. But that's, you know, if you want to have like maybe 12 frame uh, instead of six, you know, that will be a good way to go about it. As you can see right now, we don't feel too much the repetition and that works. We can see a bit longer the images and that might be a bit less erratic. For example, in the case that you want to actually expose the image slightly longer. The other aspect that you might want to modify is that right now we cannot really notice that much what's going on with the image. We might recognize a bit like, oh yeah, that looks like a bit New York vibe, but there is not, for example, like a writing that stand out or like a specific face or anything. So if you want to keep the image longer on screen, what you can do is going back again to Fusion and then here between the resize and the merge, we can hit shift space and then we're going to search for time speed and we're going to bring that in. Now here, by reducing the speed by half, so instead of being at one, we're gonna be at 0 0.5, we're basically doubling the time it takes to go from one frame to another. So rather than taking only one frame at a time, it's gonna do two frames. And then instead of a blend, I'm gonna select nearest. And now, instead of having each picture being displayed one by one, frame by frame, it's gonna take two frames to being displayed. So here, it's switching every two frames. And now we can make it even longer, by dividing it by two again. So instead of 0 0.5, we put 0 0.25. And that's gonna be every four frame that the image is changing. So you can use that to keep the image being displayed uh, longer if that's something you would like to achieve. In my case, I don't want that. So I'm simply gonna remove here the time speed. And I'm just gonna share with you a way to continue to polish up a little bit this transition to add maybe more texture or bring more element to it. So you can keep adding a few overlay to that. You can either add some static texture that you can find on Unsplash or Pixel or Pixabay, or you can add some film burn or like anything like that, that you could bring on top of this to add a bit more texture and movement to the transition. So for example, here on Pixabay, I can download that random image of uh, some film scratch 
and I'm just gonna download that. But again, you can use anything from, you know, photo to video, uh, but that might be just easier to use photo because the video would not be automatically adjusted to the timing. So right now for the photo, that's fine. I'm just gonna expand it a little bit and then we're gonna adjust the blending mode again. Here I'm gonna select screen maybe and I'm gonna adjust the blending mode just to get mostly the scratches. Here I've just played a bit with the gain and the blend to get something that is a bit more subtle and I'm happy with my final result for now. Now having a transition is great, but what help selling it is actually the sound effects that really help to just make the transition feel a bit more natural. So here I'm just gonna add probably uh, some whoosh sound, maybe a shutter sound, and you can find that all over the place on the internet. Personally, I use Artlist and Audio, but if you want a free alternative, Pixabay got a bunch of stuff as well. So here in Pixabay, I've searched for shutter sound, and I'm just gonna browse through uh, to find the best shutter sound I can find and then maybe a few whooshes or riser or any other sound that can help me sell the effect. So here I've just downloaded a bunch of sound. I'm just gonna bring everything in and I'm gonna start to play around with them, uh, layering them and just trying to create something that is a bit more interesting. So for creating a sound effect for a transition or any sound effect for that matter, uh, it's very important to layer different sound so your sound feel fuller and just more interesting and more alive. So just don't use, for example, one camera shutter sound, maybe combine two or three of them to just get a sound that cover more frequencies and that sounds a bit more alive. So right now I'm just gonna start by cutting my first sound and having it right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna paste that sound for each frame. So we have like a quick shutter effect. So now that I have all my sound effect, I'm just gonna compile them in a compound clip and I'm just gonna reduce the overall sound. All right, so this video is not a tutorial on sound effect. And let me know in a comment if you would like a dedicated tutorial on that. Basically, I've selected a few sound. I'm just gonna adjust the audio level of each of them. And then that's just gonna help to just make my transition more believable and interesting. Now, if you want to reuse that transition, all you get to do is simply right-clicking on it. And then here you can just select create transition preset. Now you can name it whatever you want. For example, here, New York transition, then you select okay and you'll be able to find it right here in Video Transition. You can then search for New York and you will have your New York Transition that you can select and just drag here in between your clip once again. I think I got a vendetta. Oh, now they call me, I seen them. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to use a more unique transition, you can check out on our website. We have a bunch of different transition pack that could be very helpful to you. If you enjoy those kind of transition style, we have the visual blend uh, transition that is available at visualstudio.com and you can uh, check it out. And to get an idea if that's the right kind of asset for you, there is a sample that you can download uh, directly on the page. So I will encourage you to do that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.